Hey everyone, how's it going? Wicked Legend here. Welcome home. All right, on today's video, we're going to be working with uh, the deep water Pan Asian destroyers uh, for beginners. So, a lot of people, I guess, coming into this line um, might not understand that the uh, the torps are actually deep water torps. So they can only attack cruisers, battleships, and aircraft carriers. Um, in order to find that out, you go to equipment, right? And the torpedo is actually a different color, but it's also a DT torpedo for a uh, deep water um, torpedo. So it indicates um, that you can only hit cruisers, battleships, and uh, aircraft carrier. Um, I will show you what it looks like on a regular destroyer, but the indicators right there, damage, uh, deal damage to, and then the little indicators. Um, if you actually go to a ship that's not let's see why don't they have any ship <laughs> let's go icarus this is your standard destroyer and you go back to equipment do the torpedoes a different color it says just torpedoes and enter and then it doesn't actually even indicate what you can hit because you can hit everything with these torpedoes uh especially destroyers but if you go back to your pan asia one uh it only indicates that you can hit three models because those are the only ones you can now what I would do for a new player is I'd focus more on the guns. Because you can't torp destroyers, you kind of have to outgun them, um, which is hard enough to do, right? But if you focus and spec into guns, your torpedoes are there to eliminate cruisers and battleships and CVs. But your biggest focus is going to be capping again, uh, spotting, uh, contesting caps, and then gunning other destroyers. Um, ideally, I would suggest finding someone to play with and having them be in a destroyer that can de torpedo other destroyers and you're going to be their backup because uh, these destroyers are actually a pretty good platform for being support to other destroyers. Um, you still have smoke. Now, the smoke isn't like other smoke. It's not as long lasting, but you have five of them. So you get a little bit more out of them. You have a speed boost. So you can get around quickly. Okay. Um, when you're starting out, get the health first that should be always ideal for any ship type you want to get your health up as fast as possible so this should always be your first buy uh, which is what we're going to do now um eventually you're going to want to upgrade torpedoes uh for these ones though you actually don't need to for the amount of damage they do already which is uh, eleven thousand, that's not bad okay if you want to get the upgrade yes you're going to go up five more thousand which is great Right? But that means the torpedoes have to still hit. But you're getting, you're making them slower, which is not good. And you're getting the reload to be slower, which is also not good. Especially at tier 5. You want as fast as possible because it's a lot faster paced. So I would get the hull first. And then I would go into the gun range. So you can actually engage things a little bit further. But it's not necessary at the beginning. Reminder that you can actually go back and sell this. Okay. Uh, you go up to top here. You go to inventory. Okay. I will show you guys now, just so you can see. You go to your modules. Okay. And in here, uh, well, good luck finding it. But at, at here, it should be actually at the bottom at this point, I believe. The newest stuff's usually at the bottom. The bottom's far away, though. Clearly. I don't know where it is. Uh oh. <laughs> it's not. It's not alphabetical. Regardless, you can go and sell it because you're not going to need the type A. You just have the type B, which is uh, a lot better. Let's see if I can actually find it. I probably can't. And I have a lot because I've done a lot of resets. And when you reset all these... Um, well, I've done a lot of resets, but I've also bought a lot of ships in the last few months. And I just haven't gone through and sold them all. Plus, I'm not exactly in need of credits, but there it is. So there's your type A. We have the type B. So sell this and get 80,000. You go sell. Watch this. You sell it. There, I went up 80,000. You exit here. And now you see that I can buy it again. If you don't see that you can buy it, that means you haven't sold it yet. Go sell it. You're always going to get half. As you can see, this is 160. I got 80. But hey, why not? 80 back. Um, for upgrades, you want your uh, main armament. For the second one, you want um, engine room protection. So then the chance of you're getting your engines knocked out is a lot smaller. 
And then for the third one, you would like uh, most of the time smoke, but if you do not have the coal to get the upgrade, I would probably go with uh, aim systems because these are all single barrel turrets, um, single barrel. Your dispersion is not the best, so you want to have the best dispersion possible because you're mostly a gunboat. You are a hybrid type of gunboat. Hybrid being uh, the torpedoes are. You're obviously a torp boat also, but because um, you can stealth, you can stealth fire them. I believe what 6.4 and your detection 6.6. .6. So the only reason that's the case is because we don't have our detection up. So I will show you guys kind of what to do here. We have one point left. Let's go add two more. And this is just so I can show you guys. Eventually, you're going to have this. So that will make it two, three. Oh, that will take the first one and another four. One, two, three, four. Yee, that's a lot. But but for science, I will show you guys. Now, ideally, you want to go for, ex uh, for health, right? Uh, for each tier, you get 350 health. That actually help you out a lot more than these. At, the, at start try to always try to uh, lead with uh for dds especially your first 10 points preventative maintenance you want to go with last stand you want to go to survivability expert and then you want to go concealment um certain gun boats and i'll show you guys when we get to that video you might not need concealment in this case we do need concealment right there's all 10 points we're now at six our torpedoes are at six four so this makes us a gunboat slash torpedo boat because we can do both, which then makes us a hybrid. Now our torpedoes, yes, cannot torp destroyers, so we need to contest them with our guns. Okay. Um, when we're in this situation, I mean, I'm I'm out of pretty much signals, but you're gonna want speed boost, which is uh, Sierra Mike. You're gonna want uh, Julie Whiskey, right? Uh, Juliet Whiskey for the chance of flooding. And you're going to want uh, Juliet Charlie so then you don't get detonated. We're just going to play with this one. Signal, I mean, or sorry, camouflage. You can pick any one of these, right? And then um, I think that's it. We have the equipment. We have the captain. He's at 10 point. And now we're going to get going. I'm going to do a single game like this to show you what it's like being without a div, what you have to do. And then I'm going to actually have uh, my friend Obi come in and be the other DD. And then I'm going to support him. And you guys are going to see what that's like also. So, uh, let's get into the match right now. Our focus now is, obviously, we can't torp destroyers. But we, we can still contest them. We can still cap. And we can still spot for our team. The number, like, the three rules for a destroyer. Uh, we can do that with a stealth torpedo build. We can do that with deep water pan-Asian. We can do that with the hybrid US line. We can even do that with uh, some of the destroyers that don't have any smoke, right? Um, that doesn't mean just YOLO in there and, and get killed. That doesn't mean that. But we can contest. And contesting is part of being successful in this game. You you want to stop them from capping and harass them enough where your team's there to help you out. Now, what kind of team are we going to get? I don't know. But that doesn't mean we can't do anything about it. Um, okay, there's one cap. So this is ideal for us now. One cap's perfect because now we don't have to focus on capping. Now we get to focus on spotting, uh, ambushing other destroyers, and killing their cruisers and battleships, and eventually their uh, aircraft carrier. Now, he's going to be in the back there. He's going to be in the back, uh, which is fine with us. What we need to do now is just move forward. Now, we're not going to move too far forward because our detection is still six. And the destroyers here can outspot us. The Minikaze can outspot us. The Visby can outspot us. Um, what does that mean? That means that, uh, well... We're going to have a harder time spotting them. Hopefully our team, though, is going to be... Uh, let's ask for help. So F5 on him. Hopefully now he's going to understand that he's going to be helping me. Now, that doesn't mean just follow the DDN. There, he says Wilco. Now I know that he's somewhat aware that he has my back. So I'm going to move forward and get into a position. Uh, if I have to, I'll disengage and smoke. But what I need to do is I need to spot for my team. And the more I spot, the better, because then our team has a chance to actually fire back at them. And that's the whole point. I don't actually have to engage, I just have to spot, at least at the beginning. And the new graphics look awesome. Hitting these waves really hard. Sometimes your ship just completely goes under. They've done a really good job with it. 
All right, so we're pushing forward quite aggressively. We know that DD is going to be here or here within the next few seconds. Um, just by playing the game long enough, you'll know where they can go. There's three options here, here, or you're going to see him going this way. Now, I am playing quite fast forward. I should start turning a little bit sideways now. Just because if I spot something, I can disengage faster. Right? So we're going to get in front of this battleship. Right now, he's our target. We are still looking for destroyers. Okay, there's also a cruiser. There has to be a DD somewhere. There's another cruiser. So now, because there's another cruiser there, we actually don't want to push any for, for, forward. Because now if we get spotted by a DD, where there's a crossfire on us. And it's very hard to dodge a crossfire. There's the Minikaze. We know where he is now. Okay, we ping it on the map. We say DD. And now we get in front. We cannot torp him, but we can outgun him. And that's our plan. We're going to speed boost. Turn that off so then they, they can't indicate. Okay. And now because we're going to use the island, we're going to we're going to have contact with him before he has contact with us. Now, this guy, because I spotted him, he doesn't have uh, concealment on his Minikaze. It's kind of strange. Okay, there's that cruiser. Now, I don't see the Minikaze, so I'm going to actually just dump Torps here and leave. He doesn't spot me. And if he maintains, remember, if you're a new player, don't just straight line. Because look, watch how easy it is for me to warp him. He's not deviating. He's not s slowing down. He's not anything. So he's just going straight. Well, guess what this indicates? Him going straight. Now he's slowing down and turning in. It's too late. Then again, I also missed because he went a lot faster than I thought. But that's okay. Our help, by the way, died because he actually followed. Remember what I said? Because you're helping someone out, that doesn't mean follow him. Don't want to smoke up yet. But I want to keep this guy spotted. I'm going to F3 on him. Hopefully this battleship can actually do something about it. My detection's at 6, so I have to maintain that 6. There we go. I have to maintain that 6. We're going to get our torps up again. Now, the Minikaze is still back there, and our Ismail is alone. But I can't actually engage this guy. He is a cruiser, and he can out-damage me. Although, if he maintains now and we actually hit him, we have a big chance of actually countering him. We have two ships down already. This is really bad. He is again turning. And we're spotted. So what we want to do now is engage him. Now that we're spotted, we engage, we smoke up, and we slow down. While we slow down and engage and smoke up, we're going to get our torpedoes to reload. There's the Minikaze that we were waiting for. This guy's unaware of us for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, someone else is aware of us, though. That's the Dallas. That's fine. See how difficult it is to uh, be a Pan-Asian destroyer? We can't do as much as other destroyers can. And all because we can't torp other destroyers. That's actually a big thing, a big factor in this. Okay, he's gonna come in. We're gonna wait just a second. We're gonna just shoot one set. Just one set. We wanna see what he does. See how he dodged them immediately? Now he's shooting AP, which is really bad. Yeah, this range, can we actually hit him? Probably. He's still shooting AP, so we just want to be broadside to him. And he's dead. Alright. An now, our Ismail died also, so our whole flank is falling apart. What we want to do is we actually want to leave and double back. And we'll go F9 on him, so he can actually leave. Okay. So we want to start heading back towards our cap. And while we're doing that, we're going to be engaging these three. It's going to be very difficult because two of them are cruisers. One of them is a DD. And they're all full health. And if their CV comes and helps them, which is looking exactly like that's going to happen, um, we're going to have a lot of trouble. Now, their CV is actually coming in to drop fighters on the Dallas. He doesn't need to. He might not come my way. We'll, we'll find out in a second. So the Dallas is leaving. I don't know where the Devonshire is. I still want to engage that Minikaze, but... If that ranger spots us, I have a huge disadvantage. 
So I'm gonna try to get out of here. Hopefully that CV doesn't spot us. It'll be very lucky if we get away with this. Dallas is coming back in the fray. But what needs to happen now is we need to kind of stop dying. <laughs> That's the hard part. Okay, I avoided the CV. Now the Dallas is here. I'm going to try to get to this island because here we go. We're, we're now spotted. By this Medikaze. We're gonna engage him and try to get behind the rock so the Dallas can't do anything to us. We can outgun this Minikaze, but he can also twerp us point blank. We can't do that to him, obviously. Um, let's see if we get lucky with this Dallas. Okay, so we're gonna try to disengage him and engage him. He probably dumb twerps. And notice how he's not firing back. This is the biggest problem with destroyers. You need to fire your guns. It's not all torping. You can't always just torp. We just need to make our shots actually a little bit better here. Okay, so the Dallas did not get torped. Now we have to disengage. Even though we can kill him. If the Dallas wasn't here, I would be pursuing him and killing him. Devonshire is also coming around the corner. There's a Devonshire shooting AP, which is ideal for us because he's not going to do as much damage. With HE, he can significantly kill us. All right, Dallas is pushing now. We just got to go straight line because um, he's going straight and we're turning, which means that we're not gaining distance. We're going to have to guess here as to where he's going. Hopefully we guess correctly, because these torps are the equalizers that we need. Now we're going to spot him before he spots us, but hopefully he's not in our detection range when he comes out of the smoke. Okay, he's not. We might be lucky here with these torps, but he has to slow down. I doubt he will. So most likely we're going to miss. Yeah, unfortunate, but we are going to stay ahead of them, at least for now. I don't know how we're going to stay ahead of the Devonshire. We still have three more smokes, which is good. He's heading that way, which is ideal too, because that means he's going to double back and see where we are. Now, you notice how I'm on my torpedoes, so it just shows that he's detected. If I go to my guns and he has priority target, it'll show that he's detected plus one. That means that someone with his guns is looking at him. Now, he's not going to pursue, which is ideal. So we're going to go try to follow this Devonshire in. We can't torp him because our range and our detection is almost identical. So we have to just get into a position where he's going to stop. We're going to use our smoke and we're going to engage him. Our team is almost at their camp. Hopefully we can keep them off of our camp now. Like the game's not over yet. Hopefully we can keep them off of our camp or contest them in our camp while our team is capping their camp. Now it's going to be a Devonshire, Dallas and this Visby in our camp. Which isn't good. Hopefully our Yahagi can kill this Visby. And we don't want to engage yet. We want to get in closer. Because then we can use our smoke and potentially our torps. So don't give up. I don't have a lot of health, but I'm not going to give up. I think I can do a lot more here. Um, this Visby is getting wrecked. Which means that if I have to engage him later on, I'll have a big advantage. Big advantage in killing him. M most likely one shot. So, speed boost is back up. We're going to try to get in there. Okay. Paying attention to our detection. And we're trying to come back into the fight right now. Now, this is the part that's difficult about this, this type of ship. You're not going to have this problem all the time. You're going to have better detection and longer range torps. But I want this for new players to understand that it's not just push forward because you can't do some of the stuff. And what's that some of the stuff? Is outgun destroyers. Now, I'm preparing my guns ahead of time. I'm going to try to kill him here before he kills me. And slow down and smoke. Now, he, can, he can't smoke up, but he can still torp me. What I need to do is 
The fact that he hasn't even shot, now he's shooting, it's already over. This engagement's over. Now the Devonshire's coming back this way, and the Dallas is coming this way. I could go for the Dallas, I'm not sure what I want to do. He's very squirmy. I'm going to go for the Devonshire. I'm going to hit him. So then there's a... Okay, he's probably going to go full turn. Yes, he is. I'm going to go widespread on this one. Because I'm trying to cover as much ground as possible. So I can actually kill him. Still can't hit the sub, but I can hit him. He has Hydro, so I'm going to leave. I missed all my torps. Slowed down. That's not good. Dallas is also coming in. If we can get him out of the cap, that would be great. And we have. And there's a fire on him. This is perfect. Now, he's 5. He's 5-2. Our detection's at 6. We're spotted. And we're about to be dead. There we go. And that's the problem, because we had nobody to help except for this Koenig. Our team kind of didn't read the map very well. Um, but the thing is, we're in their cap. And we're potentially capping it. I don't know why our Ismail's out there, but Koenig's coming back just to contest. I got the, 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 the cruiser out. He's gone. CV's trying to help. If we can now outcap them, we win. Right? But that's a big if. Um... It would have been nice if that Pensacola and that Ismo didn't die that early and they did a lot more damage. I would have had a lot more success. We tried our best. That's for sure. Um, if he can get rid of the sub before he dies. Nope, oh, he doesn't. Mm. Tough luck. Yeah, this is most likely a loss. But this is how hard it is to play Pan-Asians. So what you want to do is just not be so aggressive with them, unlike other DDs. Um, and play your strengths. Your strength is kill cruisers and battleships when they're coming at you because then your torps will you'll always be in the dark because your torps are moving forward and they're coming at the torps so that distance will be shortened you want to use your guns so make a gun build and go after destroyers and um yeah have teams that will help you out i didn't have a team they fell apart they were newer to the game so they didn't know what to do unfortunately the enemy knew kind of what to do, and those guys were dead. And then it was a bit of a struggle, but we led them down a corridor where we can kind of pick the fights, and we picked every fight, except for the last one, we kind of had no choice there. Uh, I'm going to wait for the ship to come back. I'm going to grab um, the other guy, and um, let's, let's go. Let me just... Uh, Grab him. Letting him know to me at his mic. We're gonna add him to the to the, to the game. Uh, we're waiting for our ship to come back anyway, and then uh, I'll show you what it's like to play the Deepwater Pan Asian with uh, an actual DD that. Um, that you're helping out. So. Uh. Hey. All right. I'm just waiting for my DD to come back from the battle. I did a solo just to show him what it's like with solo. Now we're going to be a div with uh, another DD. So uh, tier five, if you want. Tier five. Okay. I think I got a Z. Yeah. Perfect. Z is perfect. All right. You're not in the game. That's loading. Hold on. Oh, that's fine. So a little bit of a struggle for me. Uh, my this, my flank kind of fell apart, and it was a one v four situation against cruisers in the deep water, which wasn't ideal. But uh, we got two of them. We got no, we didn't get two of them. We got one of them. I think that was one of them. Let's go back to the results quickly. While Obi's lo loading in, yeah, we got two of them. Only one torp though, so that's why it's more of a gunboat. And we finished first place because we actually achieved what a DD would do. It's not just capping. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Let's see. He's in now. Okay. 
And we're going to go in one more time. And this is now where, where the strength of this ship comes in as a support destroyer. Now, it is putting two destroyers into one cap situation, um, which works when there's a lot of destroyers. When there isn't a lot of destroyers, and let's say there's only two and it's me and my div mate, even us sticking together will still be ideal. Um, some of the times you're going to be stuck in a situation where you're bottom tier. There's going to be a tier 6 and a tier 7 if you're playing tier 5. Uh, sticking together will work. Uh, whatever you, you don't have to do any points. Uh, just try to get your concealment up as high as possible. Or as low as possible. That's all you need. So, oh, for captain points, you want uh, the first three on the right, and then concealment. So, yeah. Um, and Asians are very good at divvying up with other destroyers, and even cruisers. Uh, you spot for your cruiser... You're in comms with him, and he's crushing everything you're spotting. When you're playing with randoms, it's very difficult to kind of indicate what you want them to do. Um, that cruiser player you saw, he's just followed me in. I mean, you can't do that. You have range. You actually don't have to be where I am in order to help. But uh, that comes down to just practice. Yeah. Just waiting on him to pick his destroyer, and then we go. And yeah, here we go. He's going to play a German one. Which is um, kind of a hybrid, also. It has the Germans have the fastest reloading torps, I believe, in the game. Uh, they don't do as much damage, they don't have the best range. They're mostly gunboats, and their guns actually pen a quarter inch. They, they have a quarter inch pen. Or a uh, quarter pen, sorry, not quarter inch pen. Quarter pen, which has a better penetration value than the rest of them, so. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. All right. So he's going to start capping and moving forward, and I'm going to support him. And when he smokes, I'm going to spot. When I smoke, he's going to spot. And knowing that I can't torp destroyers, I can actually torp through him and hit cruisers and battleships. So that's kind of one thing that also kind of is unaware. Players aren't aware that even though there's two destroyers, one can dump torps through the other. Now, he can't do that to me. Obviously, he'll hit me. But there's no uh, there's no damage anyway between teammates anymore. Um, that's been removed. But now that there's two of us, we're gonna wolf pack it and pretty much try to take care of business. We are two tiers lower. There's a tier seven. There's two tier sevens. So there's a cruiser also, and the rest of them are fives and sixes. Ideally, there's a lot of targets for me to torp. A lot of targets. Now there is div mates there too. You kind of want to focus the other divs because they are also talking. So. When you're in a position where you're by yourself or you're in a div, kind of always try to focus the people that are in other groups because they're working together. They're not working with random people that you have to type to. Uh, yeah, we're going to C. So he's indicating C, where I'm going to go C with him. We are the only two DDs, so this is the ideal situation that I was telling you guys about. We're actually going to stick together. Uh, no, C and then B. So we're going to speed boost, actually, because we want to get there as fast as possible. And we're going to work together to outgun any DD we can. Of course, my my, my partner right now is... Uh, he's not a DD player, so hopefully I get to show you guys what it's like to play with someone that's new to DDs, which is ideal. So he by accident hit smoke. <laughs> yeah. We're going to push into C. Uh, our exit is towards the 9-10 cap. 9-10 uh, line. You never want to exit towards the enemy team. Even in smoke. You always, If you have to maneuver and exit back towards your team. Now, it is a tier 5 match. So, we're a little bit slower. You need to turn off your AA, by the way. So that when the CV comes in, he doesn't detect you until he's actually on top of you. Which is what we want. So we're going to hard push C. From C, we're going to push into B. From B, eventually into A. That's that like sp splitting up. And we're going to actually um, not divide and conquer. We're going to stick together and conquer. Because whatever DD is going to be here, we know that one of them is going to B. So if there's one going to C, it's a 2v1 situation. And it's pretty easy. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you later how to set it up so it's only Q and E. So you don't have to actually move your hand across your keyboard. He's asking about 
uh, the letter P on your keyboard by default is to turn off your AA. I move mine to Q and I move, move my sector fire to E. It's a lot easier because then you don't actually have to move your hand across the keyboard and look down at your keyboard. Everything's right there where your, your, your one hand is. Now we're both going to just straight push into C, but we're not going to push to the back side of C. We're just going to push to that island, which is in the middle. And I know I've told you guys not to do that, but because it's a low tier and we're getting decent spotting, uh, we want to engage this DD. So if there's a DD here, we want to engage him now before the rest of his ships get to him because they're slower. And there we go. And now he's going to be for forced to smoke and leave because we're actually going to chase him. F3. We want him as dead as possible, as soon as possible, or as low as health as possible. So that when we see him again, the engagement's going to be even easier. There you go. See dumb torps. We're going to cap while we're doing this. Or attempt to cap. And we're going to smoke up and dump torps at the Gneisen now. I'm dumping wide torps because I don't know if he's going to turn in or out right now. And he's turning in. Smoke up. I'll spot for you. Smoke up. Oh, you don't have smoke. Uh-oh. Okay, disengage. Disengage. Okay, so he's shooting. I'm going to shoot too. We need to... Uh... Oh, there you go. Yeah, smoke up. Perfect. Just a reminder. Death charges from battleships. Don't actually... Uh-oh. Yeah, this is why you don't stay in smoke. My uh, teammate's not really aware of the don't sit in smoke aspect of the game. Even though he should know better, but it's okay. So what we're going to do is we're in a lot of trouble here. We're actually in more trouble than than we thought to begin with. We're going we're gonna to have to smoke up too. We still don't have the cap because uh, we've been getting shot at. So we're going to smoke up. Our div mate is dead. So now we're going to have to do this alone. Uh, I guess this comes with the, the ooh with the territory of working with someone that knows how to play the class, and that's fine. I mean, it, he he helped. He wanted to help, which is fantastic. Now my div mate's dead. What needed to do? Uh, what happened was obviously we needed better shots. Well, yeah. So he's asking, should I have left going forward? Yes. You smoke up just to disengage, and you leave. Now we did take care of their tier seven. Which is perfect. We are going to cap. Which is also perfect. And then we're going to engage another ship. What we need here, though, is we need to... So he's dumping torps on us right now. We're actually going to leave the cap because he's going to torp us. We're going to let the Omaha behind us cap. We're going to move forward. There are the torps. So smoke is always a torp magnet. Um, my friend Obi didn't anticipate that but that happens at all tiers what needs to happen here is we need to outgun this minikaze he is shooting back which is good good on him he needs to do that and we need to know that this omaha right here is about to come around the corner so what's going to happen here is we need to shoot torps at him and engage him with our guns because he has no armor we go ap and there's the citadels Citadels. Now, we go ping that. We go ping that. Now, uh oh. Elzer is in trouble. Yeah. Most cruisers have torps at low tiers. What we need to do now is engage B. And we know the Minikaze is there. We are low health. He is probably the same health as us, maybe even less. I know he's a lot more health than us. But that's okay. We are a gunboat. He's not. But what, what needed to happen there with uh, my div mate was he smokes up and leaves and doesn't eat torps. And I go into smoke and we keep gunning, right? We had backup. Our backup was shooting, but not well enough, which is okay. Now, this guy's gun uh, rotation isn't as good as ours. So what we're going to do is get one or two volleys in. 
We keep shooting. Oof. Why? That. Not ideal shooting. What we want to do is now push him. We don't want him to sit in smoke. We want to engage him, especially the fact that he's he's in a disadvantage because he doesn't know that we're coming. Yes, we can't torp him, but we can outgun him, and that's what we want. Now, when we break the range or the distance, oh my, he's actually out of his smoke. All right, what we're gonna do is actually stop. He's gonna come around the corner, so we're gonna stop and go for capping first. He has a lot less health than us now. Which is perfect. We want to ping him, so then the rest of our team shooting him. There you go. Perfect. Our sub's dead, but uh, it happens. This guy's out of the battle, and he's dead. So now we need to just focus at A. So what happens is, when you have two destroyers, you have the one that can initially can torp the other destroyers. But he's mostly a hybrid gunboat. The Germans are hybrid gunboats because they also have Hydro eventually. So they can test caps really well. Plus they have really good guns that can do a lot of damage. You're there also with guns that can do a lot of damage. So two destroyers outgunning another destroyer. One could potentially torp. The other one can then deal with cruisers and a battleships with their deep water. So it's a very good combination uh, if both players know how to play DDs. If one of them knows how to play DDs, you get this situation where he dies early to smoke, and then you're left alone. Just like last game, though, I'm going to do exactly the same thing now. I'm going to contest. I'm going to get in there and spot for my team. I don't have to actually cap A, uh, but if I get rid of the cruiser and get rid of that DD, we have a bigger chance of winning. Now, we're only down to three ships. They have, what, six ships? That's really bad. Us winning right now is probably not going to happen. I mean, this guy has to stay alive. I don't know how he's going to. Uh, they're going to chase that that uh, aircraft carrier. So I'm actually going to leave him alone to chase. I'm going to actually attempt to cap. Uh, by capping, it gives us a lot of points. Now, there is a Budioni cruiser coming. There's also another cruiser in the back coming. We need to spot them and kill them before they kill us. It's very hard to do because we have no health. So we make... One small mistake, and the game's over for us. Now, we don't actually know. But they don't actually know where we are. If the guy maintains coming this way, he's going to eat my torps. There's the other cruiser. Now, we could go for the CV. Maybe we should. Might actually help our team out. There are the torps I fired. Oh, they're actually looking really good. Oh, they're looking fantastic. That will help us big time. That cruiser now needs to go. But he can't yet. So what we're going to do is take a chance on the CV. Hopefully he doesn't spot us here because it's over. If he does. Now, it all depends on this engagement. If that cruiser starts firing at me, I have a very small chance of actually succeeding. And he is firing at me. I'm going to actively start dodging. Try to turn off my AA there. And there I go. And I'm dead. A New Mexico that has very bad dispersion. One shell still is enough to kill me. And there's the life of a Pan-Asian cruiser. Uh, destroyer. Very difficult. You still need a team. Our team kind of melted. And they didn't... They didn't position themselves in a spot where we can prosper from it. We can actually take advantage of it. And that's kind of where the Pan-Asians are. They, they, they're there to be a secondary to the main force. Uh, if the main force is dead, then they kind of struggle. So going into it, you got to just kind of play it safe. Hopefully you can keep your teammates alive. It's very hard because a lot of players are new and you're going to fall into that same little trap where it's just go forward and shoot. It's more to it than that. Read the minimap. Try to contest caps if you can. Make sure to be a gunboat and gun, gun, gun. You can't torp destroyers, so just know that you don't need to do a torp run and you don't need to push the middle of the cap, right? Allow those destroyers to engage you, but then that's their disadvantage because you're going to outgun them. Hopefully with your div mate, destroyer, cruiser, 
not ideal to have a battleship div made because them firing at the other DD to help you is every 20 seconds plus, right? And then they might miss. Cruisers are ideal. Destroyers are ideal. Both use smoke, but don't sit in the smoke because that's how you die. And uh, yeah, this is another loss for us. I hope it kind of gives you guys a more of a, a look on what the Pan Asian Destroyers can do. Um, later on in the tier, uh, in the higher tiers, they do a lot of damage and they, they outgun a lot better. Um, and you can even have radar on the tier 8, 9, and 10. Uh, but definitely don't play solo with radar because there's no one there to help you out if you get in a jam because you don't have smoke. Either radar or smoke at tier 8, 9, and 10. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy. This is uh, this was a different one. A different one and a, a more difficult video to show. Next up will be a, a one of the hybrids, and then we're going to get into the destroyers that have uh, no smoke. And there's two different types. So thank you guys for being here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that thumbs down if you didn't like it. And make sure to subscribe. Talk to you guys all later. Bye-bye.